Welcome to Electron Line. Now that we understand the difference between mass and weight, we can tackle the comparison between metric and imperial units when it comes to mass and weight and force. Now notice, just like in the previous video, if we have a mass equal to one kilogram subjected to the gravitational force of the Earth, the weight will simply be the mass times acceleration due to gravity, which in the metric system is 9.8 meters per second square, which means the weight of that object will be 9.8 newtons. In the imperial units, the mass is expressed in terms of slugs. Now, one slug is a greater mass than the mass of one kilogram. And the acceleration to the gravity in imperial units is 32 feet per second square. So therefore, the weight of the object is simply equal to the mass times acceleration to the gravity, which means it is equal to one slug times 32 feet per second square, which means the weight of that object is 32 pounds. Now, this is not the same object, so 9.8 newtons is not 32 pounds. What is the equivalence is that one newton is 0.2248 pounds, or one pound is 4.448 newtons. So you can see that 32 pounds, if you want to convert that to newtons, you have to multiply times 4.4, and you can see this is well over 100 newtons, so a much larger object. But we can also use it as such. Let's say we have a force of 1 newton applied to a mass of 1 kilogram, and the acceleration will be 1 meter per second squared. Now, if we have a force of 1 pound applied to 1 slug, we will accomplish an acceleration of 1 foot per second squared. So you can see we use it the same way, but Notice that here we use something familiar like kilograms, and here something that's becoming very unfamiliar to most of us, slugs. You'll see slugs very few times in any sort of textbook these days. What's interesting though is when we go to the supermarket, most places around the world, when you buy apples, you buy them by the kilogram. You pay for so much mass of apples. One kilogram of apples is a measure of mass. However, when you buy apples in the United States, you find that you'll pay for them by the pound. You pay for the weight of the apples, not for the mass of the apples. The relationship, roughly speaking, is that one kilogram is equivalent, of course it's not equal to, is equivalent to 2.2 pounds. That's the rough conversion between kilograms to pounds, but of course they're not equal because kilograms is a unit of mass and pounds is a unit of weight, so you can't really equate them. But at least, if you want to buy one kilogram of apples in the United States, you'll look for 2.2 pounds of apples and you'll end up with one kilogram of apples. Now what's also interesting is when you weigh yourself on a scale on the earth, let's say there's a person that weighs 132 pounds on the earth, they'll measure themselves and there it is, 132 pounds. But if that same person steps on a different scale that measures things in mass, you'll find that you'll have a mass of 60 kilograms and a weight of 132 pounds. Now, if that same person were to go to the moon, and of course, without, if you weren't wearing a spacesuit, you'd have to be inside your space capsule landed on the moon, you'd find that on that same scale, you would have a weight of 22 pounds or a mass of 10 kilograms. Wait a minute, that doesn't sound right, does it? Your mass didn't change. How does that work then? Well, your scale will have to be adjusted for that you will appear on the moon as if you have a mass of 10 kilograms. Of course, that's not the case. You'll have a weight of 22 pounds. You will still have a mass of 60 kilograms. So if you're going to visit another planet or you're going to visit the moon, I suggest bring a scale that measures in pounds, not a scale that measures in kilograms, because you'll get the wrong measure. And if you were to go to Mars, notice that same person that weighs 132 pounds on Mars on, on the Earth, we'll have a, a weight of 50 pounds on Mars, an equivalent mass of 22.7 kilograms. Again, your weight will not have changed. I mean, your mass will not have changed. You will still have a mass of 60 kilograms, so you will appear as if you have a mass of 22.7 kilograms, but in essence, you will weigh different, but have the same mass. Strange enough, but that's how you compare the metric system to the imperial system.